Podcast, Tomb of Annihilation, Season 2. I am the GM this for this season, I suppose, for uh, 12 episodes. We're going to be running this uh, campaign, and I am very excited about it. I was a player in the last one, and I played a character named King, and now I'm taking over the story duties, and uh, I am very excited about it. I am also a writer. You may know my work, Rat Queens. Uh, that is the main thing that I am known for. Um, so you can expect some weirdness also in our campaign. Britt, over to you. Hey, it's me, Britt Wiseman. Uh, I play Lalu Erish, a tiefling druid in this here gaming experience. Uh, Circle of the Moon. Kelly, don't make that face. Listen, it's been a long day, all right? I'm not, I'm never going to be good at intros, guys. It's never going to happen. It's always going to be awkward and uncomfortable. I like uh, it. Thank you, Danny. <laughs> our newest player why don't you take this opportunity to introduce yourself as i've done enough talking thus far Over hi i'm danny <laughs> i'm great uh uh my name is danny hartel uh you can find me on all the things at danny hartel um and i'm playing wiley yeah uh <laughs> should i talk about her yet or not let's, let, maybe we should save that for later yeah anyway uh neil <laughs> Who are you? <laughs> Hi, I'm Neil, also known as Koibu. Uh, I'm playing Langus Volmator, kind of a middle-aged fighter who's lost all of his fitness and shape, and he's kind of now just <laughs> heavy set and kind of slightly going crazy, I think we discovered at the end of the last season. Um, I do a bunch of D&D &D stuff on my channel, and my little brother's middle name is Wiley, so take it away, Kelly. <laughs> okay, interesting. I feel bad now that nice. I don't have an interesting fact, but uh, I'm Kelly Link. I play Yori Diggle, the halfling rogue, also called the accountant, and sometimes the shot caller of the group, but usually just wants money and, and like is trying to do anything that she can to get it. Uh, on social media, I'm Hello Kelly Link. Uh, on the internet, I host an, an interview for video game tournaments, and I also play Dungeons and Dragons, which I'm really excited to get into. Curtis, how, how are you? I am good. I am ready to roll. The last we left off, well, we uh, were sailing, setting sail uh, away from Chult from uh, Port Niranzu. So we are going to find out what exactly happened after we set sail and left the jungles of Chult behind right after this. Welcome back, everyone, <laughs> to season two of the Miss Clicks Adventure. We left off last having found and delivered a maybe a cure, maybe a potion for uh, the Merchant Prince Jessamine. And after delivering that, we were paid and decided to all get the hell out of Dodge. We'd had enough of the jungles. We'd had enough of the disease and misfortune that this whole land seems to be plagued with. And we boarded a ship um, called the Ocean Carver and set sail. Basically, we've been sailing now. My character is obviously still there. That's why I'm saying we. King is still present. Nice. Um, and we have been sailing now for a... Sorry, I've just got to increase my mic volume here. Sorry about that, everyone. I'm new to all this, so it's going to take <laughs> me a sec. Okay, well... There we go. Um, yeah, so you guys have been at, have set sail for now for maybe a day or two. You have sailed up out of the port uh, near Anzu, or wherever you say that. And what have all of you been up to over the last, we'll say, day? It, the crew, there's about uh, eight crew people that run this uh, the ship. You are heading towards a city called uh, Callumport. And I'm going to just drop a map here so you guys can see um, kind of the region that 
you guys are heading towards. Uh, you Ooh. spoke with the captain. His name is Captain George Fairweather. The only thing you really know about him is he's a good captain and he eats fresh oatmeal every morning. Uh, he's, got a, he's got a long <laughs> bristling beard. He quite often has oatmeal in that beard. And uh, he just says, you know, when you, when you board the ship, they were heading back to Calumport after a supply run to the port city here. And they expect it to be about a 14-day trip back to Calumport. So it's a day has passed. What have you guys been up to? Ooh. You know, I think Yori, very frustrated towards the end of the last adventure that we were on, just pretty much wanted to get off the island for the time being and get away from Jessamine, is actually fishing, has taken up fishing on the boat. Very okay. relaxing. Wow. She's attempting to meditate and, you know, turn a new leaf. All right. Uh. While Yuri is trying to relax and fish, I am very curious as to when we're going to go back to my hometown, which we seem to be getting further and further away from, uh, to exact revenge on the people who chased me out of town for accidentally burning down the library. So uh, I think over the last one to two days, uh, I have been looking at for maps, trying to figure out where we are, how far away we're going to be, uh, kind of trying to bug Yuri and sort of starting to realize that my return to my hometown with her to exact revenge will probably be happening later rather than sooner. And your aid doesn't even seem to care at this point. So I'm like, my character is kind of wondering if I should stay with everyone or if I should just like go back and do I knew this myself. Uh, so that's where I'm at. <laughs> yeah. So you actually, uh, I updated the map there. This is, you've spent a little bit of time uh, with, with the captain you've been very impressed with his maps he's got many maps all over his giant desk and you ask a little bit about how you're going to be sailing and so he draws you this map and you can see there there's um his planned voyage for the trip to Calumport. he tells you a little bit about the sea and uh, he travels this region quite a lot and you know for this time of the year the the weather can be a little bit turbulent but they don't call him fair weather for no good reason he's he's a lucky man when it uh when it comes to ocean voyages and so he seems pretty confident that it should be a nice, um, nice smooth sail all the way to Calumport. Uh, what is Langus up to? You know, I think Langus is trying to leave the jungles of Cholt and the horrors that happened there behind. So he's frequently found near the prow of the ship, kind of just leaning against the rail, looking out towards the horizon, uh, kind of like letting go of the whole Jorm issue and occasionally looking back fondly at the party members that he's known and kind of uh, there they are, my two people that I've survived all this with. It's good to have them around. Uh, it's kind of like enjoying their company from a distance and looking forward to not being on this crazy island. All right, and Wiley. Why am I on the boat? You are. You also have set sail. You, um, Well, I mean, what led you to take a boat and sail away from where you grew up? Well, Wiley... Um was raised in a daycare. She was the only kid that lived there, uh, but her parents left her at the daycare and never came back for her. And she was raised by the lady who ran the daycare and her name was Nan and she died um, recently. So uh, she didn't want to stay at the old daycare house. She wanted to go out and see, see what's up. You know, she's, she's just been in one place her whole life and she is 12 whole years old. So it's about time she see what's out in the world, you know? So yeah, that's why she's on this boat. <laughs> so so the, the three of the, you know, the characters from the last season, you guys are all familiar with each other, but uh, other than the crew, it's the three of you. And then this uh, fairly young looking half orc uh, girl who is kind of keeping to herself a little bit and that that's all the passengers on the ship. The rest is just crew. They've emptied their cargo hold. They've, filled it up with some new wares and goods from uh, Chalt, but they've, yeah, that's that's who's on there. Well, what do you guys do? King is a half-orc as well, right? Uh, yes, you also see a half-orc wearing a mask and lots of weird uh, monstrous body parts, uh, strapped like scarves, and, um, but he is, he's kind of keeping to himself as well. He's enjoying uh, being away from the island, and yeah, he's, uh, he's a fairly large looking guy, kind of Kind of intimidating, but he's very quiet, keeping himself to the corner. And he's pretty much been doing that for the last day, it seems. Yori scooches a little close to King. 
whispers under her breath ignorantly, do you, do you know that other half work? Do you know? What does that mean? What do you what do you mean? What is why why would you, why would you assume that I know her? <laughs> well, we found you on Cholt, and then here she's on Cholt. Do you know? I mean, how many other half orcs are there? At least two. Oh, well, <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna take that as a note, and she goes back to her fishing. The one moment that she tries to connect, nope. <laughs> Wy Wiley Wiley can see that you guys are talking about her because she's like always looking at everybody, and she goes hi. <laughs> Oh, there's two of them. <laughs> All right. Uh, so. I think I think Wiley would look at King and be like, "You look like me. That's cool." Uh, this mask of a uh, what was it again? It was a um, not a bugbear. Uh, Edder cap. It's an Edder cap mask. It's like a spider face turns to you, and um, all right. And goes back to to doing what it is that he does best is just being a lonely weirdo. Cool. Um, what about the other two? What are you guys up to? I think Langus is going to try and approach this half orc. It's obvious that this is like a young twelve year old looking half orc, right? Well, I think you yeah. said, Danny, that they're she's basically like equivalent to a human eighteen year old, right? Yeah, like orc years, uh, like adulthood is like fourteen, so she's like like okay. a 17 18 year old in her mind but she's also very immature so 12 mm. is like pretty close to the number <laughs> in her mind <laughs> okay but you're fairly tall then and well i built. am six eight and oh, 210 okay. Whoa, pounds okay i'm right. like a big like lanky teenager awkward <laughs> bodied person <laughs> and, and that in that case king's just like duh <laughs> uh, are you uh do you have weapons do you have armor are you a spellcaster did you have uh, a class i i am a, a mystic which is a psychic ability person and um i'm very in tune with my emotions and your emotions and everyone's emotions and i can even control everyone's emotions here and there um but other than that i have a big mace which is my favorite <laughs> And her name is Sally. It's like the most terrifying description of a character <laughs> I've ever heard in my life. Sally, um, no right? I can anyway. manipulate your emotions, and then I have a mace. <laughs> you know, in, in case that doesn't work. But she's she wears a uh, yellow leather dress, like a sundress, but it's bright <laughs> yellow. She loves yellow. She she wears as much yellow as possible. And she's got like yellow ribbons, like lacing up all the leather pieces that she is wearing. She looks obnoxious. Oh, and she she's got hair buns that are bleached blonde because oh, she also wow. just needed more yellow. Okay. So yeah. All right. Th this That's is defying every stereotype that Langus has ever seen or heard about. <laughs> uh, so he's a little interested in this, and he'll he'll head over to you and say, <clears throat> "Hello there, large woman." Hi. What's your name? What, who are I you? I am Langus Volmator, last of my line. What is your name? My name is Wiley. That's the whole line. I, I don't have a line. It's just. Do you don't have a family? Nope. How <laughs> sad. It's all right. It's okay. What happened to them? Uh, they just left me. I guess they didn't want me or something. But like, that's okay. I mean, like, your real family is the family you choose. So. You know, I'm just going to make some friends and call them my family. That sounds... Would you like to have a drink? Uh, I... What kind of drink? I don't know if I'm old enough for uh, that. But yeah. <laughs> just looks up at you. He's like, he's like five eight or five nine. He's like, you're not old enough to drink. <laughs> yes, I would like a drink. Let's forget I said that. Let's... <laughs> Sure, sure. What, uh, what are we? What are we drinking? Is it like grape juice or what? Uh, <laughs> yes, grape juice. We will find fermented <laughs> grape juice. Um, nice. I kind of like go to look around for for Yori. <laughs> Yori, Yori, can, can you come join me with <laughs> with this new person for a drink? King, can you come with I don't want to talk to her alone. Okay. Oh yeah, hey, what's up? Hey, how you doing? Who are you? She stares up. 
size she possibly could to the person that's twice her size. Hi, hi, hi. You're I'm hustling, a, right? Yes. Half cool. wing of your size. <laughs> we, uh, probably more like a quarterling, but yeah, okay. probably. My That's name was a halfling, scary. so I know to be gentle. I won't. I won't play with oh. you too hard. Okay, thank you. <laughs> what, uh, Langus? What did you want? Oh, uh, we were gonna go downstairs to get a drink, and I thought you might want to come with us. Oh, yeah! You know, I was kind of fishing, but... The know. fish will always be biting. Yeah, uh, you know, they really haven't been biting too much, but, um, yeah, let's go get a drink. <laughs> let's let's go sure, get a drink. Sure. Let's, yeah, okay. okay. All right, so you guys head down um, below the deck, and so you guys have already been assigned rooms. Um, you each have a, your own private pl- uh, place. You paid... A decent amount of gold for it, but you each have your private room. Um, Wiley and Yori, your guys' rooms are right across from each other, right at the back uh, end of the ship. And it's it's there's three levels to this ship. You guys are in the mid level at the far back. Um, Langus is uh, Langus is kind of at the midship, uh, just a little bit down the hall, and Lalu is at the front. So you guys yeah. head down, and there is a general kind of right next, kind of between Langus and Yori's room, there is a general quarters where there's like, they have food and they have drink, and that's all was included in the gold that you paid for your journey. Nice. And uh, so you're, you're welcome to help yourself. All the oh, crew yeah. is busy, of course, and, and attending to the ship while the rest of you have free to do whatever you want. Yori immediately grabs the closest thing that looks like liquor to her and starts drinking so she doesn't have to say anything. I'm already back there drinking. <laughs> I'm back there drinking, like contemplating what my what my next steps are. Life. Uh, I gingerly hand the giant orc a glass of wine. Okay. I take it. <clears throat> Grape juice. Is that that's what your people call this? I don't know. This is like the grape juice Nan had. It, it's. It'll do. <laughs> okay. It's making a little bit more sense. Fine, fine, fine. Uh, All so right. you... Oh, go, sorry, go for it. No, no, go ahead. Um, so you, you have no family. <laughs> no! Yori spits out some of the beer that she's <laughs> drinking immediately. <laughs> Well, I'm really preoccupied with this family thing. Like, do you do you have your family around all the time, or what? I used to. They they all, don't like you anymore. I'm sorry. They were all murdered in a peasant oh, uprising. I'm sorry. Yes, yes. Wait, it's, so you don't have any family either? Mm. Oh, well, that's okay. You can be my family. Well, that's why I was hoping to invite maybe not the family yet i think, <laughs> don't think we're quite there but oh just jump in but you it's know okay <laughs> when she we'll says see. that i'm just like because like langus has been trying to like become like familial with me for a long time and i've been like trying to like be close to him but i grew up without parents and stuff too so when i hear that i'm like oh my god i kind of <laughs> like the idea of it but it's uh it's intense but I say, I tell you, I, I don't have any family either. Cool. Well, you're welcome to join our family club. Okay. <laughs> What's your name? I'm Lalu. What's Lalu, your name? Lalu. That's fun. Uh, my name's Wiley. Wiley. Yeah. Wiley. Uh, so Wiley reminds me a lot of Zisa already. So part of that, like, makes me feel a little more comfortable with her because she's, like, really loud spoken and friendly, which is how Zisa was when I met her. So... That like comforts me a little bit. So I'm trying to be more open to the experience of making friends. <laughs> I look towards uh, towards Yori and go, Yori, what's your family status? I have a family. They were, you know, just kind of boring and lame. I don't know. I I left when like they. I don't really care about them. So I I you know just been on my own for a while. It's a uh, Wait, whatever. Who, care, who cares about family when you yeah. got boats and beers, right? Boats. Right, and, and just she starts drinking more of her beer. <laughs> yeah. Who cares about family? <laughs> Boring families are just as bad as no family, so you're welcome to join ours. Finger snaps. Finger snaps to you, Wiley. She tries to do that too, but really badly. It just kind of goes like that. <laughs> <laughs> 
All right, so you guys all hang out down in this this comfy little room and kind of share bread and and drink around the table. Um, and that's kind of how you spend the next couple of days. You'll you spend some time up top and taking in the ocean view, and you can see Chult kind of disappearing in the distance after about five days. You've been kind of traveling along the inner coast a little bit. And um, by about day five, uh, you can see that the, the, the clouds start to darken on the horizon and, and the captain seems to be a little bit more uh, stern and a little bit more, uh, I guess, furious with his men that they're not working hard enough. He's a little bit agitated. Um, and at the end of the fifth day, he approaches you and he just he kind of stands up top and he makes a bit of an announcement. He's got a fresh uh, oatmeal in his hand as he scoops in and... <laughs> Now, I, now, now listen here. I don't want everyone, anyone to be concerned. Uh, you know, I am Captain Fairweather. I, the weather is always fair wherever I go. But it looks like we might be having to take a bit of a detour. Um, the storms uh, seem to be rising up in the east, and this time of year, I don't, I don't want to risk going directly through them. So we're gonna, we're gonna head south for a little bit, and then back eastward again up to Calimport. It's just a short detour. It's gonna add three or four days, but you don't need to worry about it. We'll get you there safely. Um, meanwhile, if there are times when I tell you to get below deck, please listen to me or the rest of the crew. And uh, that would be much appreciated. If there's any questions, I'm not answering them. So uh, good day to you. And he goes back good. into his... Good day. Captain's chambers, closes the door, and the crew starts busying themselves with work. Um, at the end of the fifth day, you guys are, how are you guys feeling now that you've heard that you're going to be delayed longer and there's a potential storm? Wiley uh, says, that was weird. <laughs> Yori has yet to catch any fish on her new attempt to become a fisherman and has now grown resentful and angry of ever attempting to fish. Why don't, so you, now, uh, why don't you make a roll, actually? Let's see if maybe on the know. fifth day, after practicing for days and days and days and King laughing at you the entire time, uh, this will just be a straight-up intelligence roll. Okay. Let me pull up my uh, character sheet. Oh, I guess not intelligence saving throw, though. Oh, God, uh, and I'm dumb. Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> oh, Ooh, Okay. Not right. dumb enough. Uh, yeah, on the last day, you managed to actually catch a, like a good 40 pound, um, <gasps> it basically is like a, a, a large tuna fish. And it actually, King it stops laughing for the first second and grabs the line. It helps you. He's the other thing almost pulled you in. You weigh about the yeah, same as the fish. Pretty much. Caught. So he grabs you by the ankles and you guys slowly reel in this tuna fish. <laughs> Yuri, um, elated, is holding the fish as steady as she can as she's wiggling all around the, the uh, entire boat. It's actually a real battle. Uh, you guys are <laughs> flopping around. Nobody's <laughs> helping you. King actually lets go, just watches you flop around the deck. Why don't you make a, uh, it's like a strength check, athletics check. Let's see who wins. You or the fish. I will cheer on Yuri from the other side, but not going anywhere near this. Go, Yuri! <laughs> Wrestle it! Go! All right, so uh, this is what it gets. Oh, it's, oh! A, it's a tie. You guys, there's a little bit of damage going every which way. You crack your head, you smash it up against the wall. It's it's pretty intense. Uh, and then after about like, well, actually it goes on for a long time. It's like <laughs> 10 minutes of this with nobody stepping in. Eventually King just spears it in the side of the head and finishes it off for you. And breathless, you fall off your catch of the day. Yes. You know how boring it's been on the ship. This is all, even the struggle and the wounds and everything, the head injury, it was all worth it. But she stares at King, longing, please, please cut this and cook it for me. All right. So, so King's going to do that. He's like, oh, all right. It was, it was very commendable that you caught a fish like that. Um, seems that you listened to my advice. So uh, I'll help you out. All right. So King uh, is going to make a, just a survival to see what happens here. Wiley is so proud of you, by the way. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, he manages to kind of cut it up and uh, kite this nice little like uh, fillets of this Ooh. tuna fish. And uh, so you can add that to your character your inventory. You have 10 uh, beautifully cut pieces of tuna fillet. Got it. Added tuna fillet. So that night after seeing this ridiculous uh, events occur, everyone kind of winds down by the internet. You share a couple of drinks before you head each to 
your own um, private rooms and, and sleep comes to you pretty quickly. You do sense that the waves are getting a little bit rockier and it does concern you a little bit, but Captain Fairweather seemed pretty confident. So um, you sleep finds you. Uh, Langus. Mm -hmm. As you fall to sleep, you have this weird um, sense. Like, you know, when you start to fall asleep and you feel like you're falling and you, mm -hmm. you jolt yourself awake, you manage to do it. You jolt yourself awake, but you wake up in a completely different room. In fact, it's a small peasant's building, uh, like a, a home, a hearth. It's a single room. Um, there's a couple of really poorly constructed chairs around a few buckets strewn over them. There's a fire in the hearth and it looks like there's some, uh, maybe you smell food, maybe something's definitely burning. Uh... I kind of take stock of my surroundings. Are there windows? What's the lighting like in here? There is windows, but it seems to be extremely dark outside. Uh, dark to the effect that you can't, it doesn't make sense that you can't see through them. But there is a single door that leads to this place. In fact, the door is weirdly placed where the door is placed in the room of uh, on the ship that you're staying. You said there was a fire in the hearth, right? That's right. I give a... Yori? Lalu? You don't hear anything. Your room echoes very sharply uh, against the walls of the room. I... Am I lying down, standing up? Uh, you, you're lying on the floor, in the middle of the floor. Half of your arm is on, um, like, a fur blanket that's centered around a table. Okay. Uh, but that's where you wake up. You sit up. You jolt I'll, straight up into this room. I'll get to my feet uh, and search for my weapons and armor all my gear. You weirdly have none of that. You do not have your weapons. You Am do I not... dressed like a peasant? Don't tell me I'm dressed like a peasant here. <laughs> you are dressed in clothes that you haven't worn in a very, very long time. Uh, in fact, Ooh. this reminds you of a time in your life With... before you left home, uh, the last day you spent in your hometown. Uh, kind of understand realizing this is like this is like my hometown this i haven't worn this since my the castle was burned uh i'm gonna grab a log out of the fire if i can hold it by one end yep and uh go kick down the door and run outside hoping All to right. finally defeat that peasant army you kick open the door with a flaming tinder in your hand and the door just cracks open with the, uh, with the strength of your kick and as it opens up, you can see immediately swarming around the outside of this a massive horde of angry peasants. Some of them have blood splashes on them. There's Their fires are burning in unison above them with all these torches, and they're chanting, death, death to the family that keeps us, that keeps us so far down, death. And they slowly start to move towards you like a droning, mindless army. Uh, I raise the torch to grab their attention and I <clears throat> call out loudly, good people of the lands of Vulmator, your problems are not as a result of our inaction. It is the greater socioeconomic problems our kingdom is within. You cannot come down on me or us, on our family for this and it would be frivolous. We have done everything we can to support this, these local lands Overthrowing the ruling class will only worsen your economic situation. Listen to me, people. <laughs> this makes me so happy. I love it. <laughs> you hear a voice, uh, an older man, somewhere deep in the this horde of people. You sound just like your old man. <laughs> Thank you. I am most honored and humbled by your compliment. Please, please put down your weapons. We can work through this peacefully. I don't want to have to kill every one of you. As you or continue, any of you. as you continue to speak, they form this semicircle around you and are slowly closing in. And that's when you notice um, there's a strange sensation in your feet. And you look down, and your feet are slowly sinking into ash. And you sink up to your calves, almost oh. like the ash is pulling you ah. deeper into the earth. And you get down to you about your knees. Ah. 
and you wake up. <laughs> uh, next. Yori. You have a similar sensation. You fall for what feels like 20, 30 feet, and you wake up when you feel a, a sharp smack against your back. And you find yourself standing outside of a hut in the middle of the prairie. And it's dark. There's a, It's completely cloudless night, completely silent. And there's an unnatural light shining down on this thatched hut. And it smells so bad here, like like manure, fresh manure everywhere. And your feet even feel a bit squishy as you recognize that you're standing barefoot in mud. That smell, I, I recognize the smell. She's looking around a little, a little like anxious, but not trying to show that she's anxious. She doesn't know what's going on. She's dealt enough with the darkness that she knows that she needs to keep her cool. That's what the fishing has been teaching her, man. <laughs> you hear uh, very light laughter coming from inside. Uh, it's a male voice, just a, a little bit higher pitched, um, but it's just like a real lighthearted, jovial laughter. She goes inside, a little interested, less, a little less anxious. Her guard's kind of down now. You see as you open the door, there, it's a one-room affair. Again, it looks very similar to the room that you're sleeping in on the ship. And there's two people inside sitting at a table playing cards with each other. You immediately recognize the one on the right is Darian, a young elf that you used to work with that, well, you know what happened. And he turns and he looks at you, and across the table from him is a fairly large, fat, pot pig with a monocle. Yori is beside herself, but trying to like not freak out in anger. I think can can I roll to see if she's aware that this is obviously absurd and like. Yeah, sure. You can make a uh, wisdom saving throw. She's obviously very perturbed right now, but like is trying to like. I, I think the fishing has and, and the successful end of the fishing has kind of given her a lesson of like patience and like you know internalizing and like kind of like holding on to reality in a weird way but she fails it miserably so she starts freaking out and like tears start rolling down her face she's All right, not really so saying anything you you this in, in, indescribable feeling of fear terror maybe, maybe a bit of shame shame uh just guilt goes across your body and you 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 can't look at it anymore you just hear this pig squealing as you turn and run and start running through this deep oh. shitty mud that gets deeper and deeper all the way up to your knees until you wake up Ugh. next lalu the same feeling you fall and hit something hard and you wake up you wake up to the stench of fire and a blood red sky with red lightning cracking through it and all around you is ruined like this used to be a place that people lived and you feel power coursing through you. You can make a perception roll to see what you see okay. where you stand. <gasps> Nothing. <laughs> you can't in your enraged state, you feel anger just absolutely coursing through your body and your hands are actually twitching like your fingers and arms are like they're being shocked. There's so much uh, adrenaline shooting through your body. The only thing that you can see in this state of mind is that your hands are covered in dark red blood. And you can hear in the distance people screaming in horrific pain at something that has just happened. And that's when you look down and see that you're standing knee deep in blood. And finally, Wiley. <laughs> Yes. Wiley, you have the exact same <laughs> feeling of falling until you land on something very sudden and shocking and you wake up. Except you don't wake up in a room. You wake up in a place that's very familiar to you. You used to spend a lot of time on the, in the Mist Cliffs, which is in the northern reaches of Chult. Uh, you spend a lot of time walking there in contemplation during the day sometimes when uh, Nan was too busy with the other kids. You would just go off and ease it up a little uh, for her for the day. 
But there's something else that always drew you to this place, as though this was a place that you'd been to long before you were ever dropped off at this uh, daycare. And as you're walking along these cliffs and seeing the crashing ocean and the roiling storm that seems to be coming in from the north, the white lightning outlines a woman. Her back is turned to you and she's standing at the edge of the cliff. But she doesn't seem to notice you yet. What do you do? I go, hey! <laughs> hey! The, she doesn't seem to hear you. In fact, it might be the wind. There's a lot of wind and there's thunder rumbling off of the ocean, the crashing of the waves below. It's very loud here, but she doesn't seem to hear you. Uh, I move towards her uh, a little bit more and I scream even louder, like, hey! As you get closer, she doesn't seem to turn. You can make a perception roll. Okay, you're gonna have to teach me how to do that really quick. Do you have your character sheet open on the screen in front of you? I do. Okay, so just look for the perception on your character sheet. Mm -hmm. It's down near the bottom there. It's all alphab alphabetical order on the sheet. Uh, and then passive just, perception? Uh, oh, passive wisdom? No, just so... uh, perception in the skill list. It's like acrobatics, animal handling, arcana, athletics. Keep going down until you see oh, perception. Oh, oh. Oh my goodness, where did it go? It's just to the right of wisdom on the- There it is. Thing. There's a lot of P words all together. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I found it. All right, let's see. Uh, oh no! <laughs> uh, yeah. I will, I, I, I'm actually gonna give you advantage of that because you are familiar with this place. You've spent a lot of time in these cliffs and you are familiar with your surroundings. And as you call to her, she doesn't seem to turn, but just a little bit as though she's hearing something just out of out of the reach of her hearing and she turns and you can see that there's something swaddled in her arms and she continues to take steps towards the edge of the cliff oh no uh i just start screaming this nonsense garble at the top of my lungs like no in this weird moment your perspective shifts and you are no longer the person witnessing this woman walked towards the edge of the cliff. Instead, you are the small child wrapped in her arms and you look up and see a young orc woman as she tearfully drops you off the side of the cliff. And when you hit the water, you wake up. <gasps> oh shit. <laughs> I ain't fucking around with this game. <laughs> I love it! <laughs> oh boy. All of you wake at the exact same time to a thunderous crack. And you realize that the dreams that you are having are tied directly to the events that are transpiring in the real world. As you look down, you see water slowly filling each of your rooms and you hear a mighty shuddering crack and you all fall off your beds and splash into the ground as you start to realize the ship is sinking. Oh God. Oh no, oh no, oh no. Uh, I just start shouting for the captain and <laughs> like get up and leave my room and start running yeah. down the hallway to Wiley meet up runs. with everyone else to figure out what's going on. Yeah. As you step out of your doors, you immediately see that the ship has already cracked apart into three pieces and each of those pieces is sinking. Yori and Langus, you come out at the exact same time, or sorry, Langus, uh, Yori and Wiley, you come out at the same time and you see across from each other, you look to your left, and that middle section of the ship, right where that room was where you drank together, has been blown away. And you can see about a 15-foot gap between where it used to be, and it's floating in this giant storm as these black waves crash and lightning streaks through the sky. Water, your ship starts to tilt like this, and you start to slide down towards the water. Uh, Langus, you do the same thing. You kick open that door and you look to the left and you see just as your ship starts, this section of the ship starts to sink, you look and see your, your new friend and your old friend, Yori and Wiley, their half of the ship just floats a little bit out of view. I take it, I go the other direction for and start yelling, Lalu! Lalu, where are you? <laughs> All right, so you come out, uh, Lalu, and you are in the front of the ship and it is also tilted. It is sinking actually quite quickly. Uh, the storm is roiling all around you. Uh, you guys are still all on the second uh, floor. This is filling up very quickly. What do you want to do? Uh, 
is Langus's piece of the boat sinking less quickly than my piece? <laughs> uh, they seem to be all be going down at a They're fairly down, similar similar rate. Can we see rate. land anywhere around us at all? Do you want to make a perception check? You're still I... in the you're still in the second level, so it's okay. You know, you don't have a very good view from here because the ship is kind of tilting, and you're sliding back, not to the water. But okay, back so the I ship. guess what I would want to do is like crawl or run or climb or whatever I have to do to get to like the highest part of the ship. Okay, so why don't you make a, an athletics check? Okay. okay. Oh boy. While she's doing that, I'm gonna <gasps> run back into That's my room, not good. grab my backpack, and just like toss in my rations. My torches, my tinderbox, my water skin, my rope, and that's it. And uh, now, are you wearing your armor? No, I don't sleep in my armor. Okay. Uh, I'm leaving my weapons and armor behind. Okay. Okay. Um, I, I I'm out in the hall with Yori, right? That's right. You're right, standing right in front of each other now. I just pick her up and like put her over my shoulder and just start running <laughs> towards the edge of the boat. She's desperately calling back to her goal. <laughs> you have no time to react to it. She grabs you and throws you over her shoulder. Um, Wiley, you run up, or uh, more like, yeah, you start running down because this ship is actually sinking in that direction towards the water. It's pretty slippery. But there is a little section of the staircase left that you could climb up as before it starts to sink into the water. Do you want to just go up to the next one? Yes, step? We're, right. we're going up out of the water as far as we can. All right. Uh, so you managed to get up. Uh, Langus, you gather as much stuff as you can in that in that moment. Lalo, you try to get up, but for the life of you, you cannot. It, it's, the ship keeps shifting with each wave that crashes against it, tossing you back and forth. You're unable to get a good footing, and the section of your ship is still going down. And this is what you guys see. All right. Well, me, uh, me and Wiley, I, I didn't see Lalu or Langus, right? I just saw Wiley. That's the way you saw Wiley. It's a, yeah, exactly. Uh, okay. He got a good view of you. You can hear screaming in the water from all different places. People are, uh, there are a bunch of people out in the water right now. You can't see who it is. You just hear voices yelling, terrified. And as those of you who are on the top deck, you see these waters are full of sharks. Oh have we, boy. Have we seen or heard anything from King as well? Make a perception check. All right. You guys are rolling terrible. <laughs> In all of the chaos, even though you're standing grabbing onto the side of the rail, you do not, you can just see dark figures and the occasional fin pop up. But yeah, you do not know where he is. All right. Langus, what do you do as you get to, uh, or you get all your stuff together? Your section starts to lilt towards the left a little bit. Um, right towards, there's a, a ladder which leads straight into this uh, middle section. I try and go for the high ground. All right. High ground. Just Dash up the stairs. Up, up. Get to the top. And as you get there, you grab onto the railing as it lilts to the left and then immediately to the right again. And now it's starting to actually sink as it lilts to the right. It's starting to go down. Um, make a perception check when you get to the top. All right. I break to the surface and... Oh, God, I'm not good at perception. All right, so you take a quick look around. Uh, you can see across the way the other hide at the side of the ship, about 15, 20 feet away, um, floating uh, desperately. And you can see that there are rocks that kind of jut up out of the waters. You're, you must be somewhere near a shoreline, you think. Uh, in fact, if you look on the map, all of those circles and rectangles are la juts of land that come up out of the water. Oh. Um, can I spot any of my party members anywhere? You just, you can see the ship and you can see Wiley and Yori desperately grabbing to the side of the railing, trying to get their bearings. I kind of point beyond them and I say, rocks, go to the rocks. Where's Lalu? Uh, you guys both, Yori and Wiley, you guys can both make perception to see if you can hear. You see him, he's saying something. He's waving his arms around like crazy, mm -hmm. but in the noise, it's really hard to hear. You can make a perception. Oh. Huh? <laughs> what? What? <laughs> so you can't hear him. You see him, and he's make he's waving his arms around. He clearly has a plan, but you don't know what that plan is. Lalu... We don't have time for cheeseburgers, <laughs> Langus. Shut up! 
<laughs> Lalu, what are you Drunkard. doing as your section of the ship starts to go underwater? Mm, I am turning into a giant octopus and swimming over to Langus to grab him with one of my many, many arms. Okay. And bringing him over to where the rest of our party is and basically guiding, placing all of them on one of the safe uh, rock areas. Okay, so, so you, you shift <laughs> immediately into this yeah. giant octopus. Whoa, boom! I have a million arms. And the water is no longer a, a fearful thing. This is now your element, and you jut out, uh, swimming quickly out of the ship. You can make a perception roll with advantage. Awesome. Mm. All right, 22. Jeez. I you, am one perceptive octopus. <laughs> you are. Uh, you have, it's just this underwater world is now your own, and the storm that rages above is quiet. You, it doesn't affect you down here. You take a quick look around, and you see a lot of reef sharks all around, and you can see bodies of, of the sailors desperately swimming, and just as you look, you see one of them that's right ahead of you, uh, right here. I don't know if you can see it on the map there, but mm -hmm. uh, that one, uh, he gets bit in half at that exact second. One of the eee. sailors gets bit in half, and the shark continues to swim through him, and uh, he dies immediately. Uh, you also see... I'm going to see how far this is here. Uh, sorry, I don't need to move the character. Where's that draw tool where you can see how far things are? There we go. Yeah, you can actually see... Uh, it looks like you're pretty sure even further ahead you see king underneath the water with his with his um trident trying to spear these things but he has three sharks swimming around him he's bleeding pretty badly already he's been bit a few times and he looks like he's kind of on his last legs um and with also with that perception roll you see this floating in the distance uh, eric you might have to make the um the map a little bit more visible for uh, the people at home to see it uh, all of a sudden, you spot a boat, uh, a rowboat that looks like the uh, the rowboat from the ship that has crashed up against a couple of the the rocks uh, on the other side, and it floats there, stuck against, even though the waves crash against it. It looks like it's still in, um, yeah, it's still in good good repair, and it's floating there. Nice. Uh, yeah, I think I'll just start basically collecting my party members. Um, uh, right. I don't know you're a giant I octopus. <laughs> no, Legus just thinks a giant octopus is coming to murder him. <laughs> so I'm going to fight you. I use you. my octopus arms to make a heart shape. <laughs> All right. Yeah, well, Legus is freaking out. Oh, giant octopus! And I assume that there's some, like, a uh, towel or some other material that I can, like, find floating in the water that I, like, wave. Sure. Wave yeah, at you can do that. It's terrifying. It's taunting me. <laughs> oh god! All right. So oh, you let's actually let's roll some initiative here, everyone, uh, and we're gonna oh. see how this all plays out. Oh boy! First initiative of the season. Do I just click? Initiative? Oh, okay, click your icon. Click your, yeah, click your click character, your icon first, and then and click then, initiative. Yeah, and you'll know yeah. you're clicked on when you have the three circles above your character. Gotcha. Did I do it? Uh, yes, yes, there it is. Yes. yes you did. Well, okay. you did, however. <laughs> Not well, but you did. <laughs> All right. So this shark here um, just swims straight at um, straight at King and is going to make a bite attack on him. That's a natural 20. Whoa! Yikes! It's going to be Boy. that hard this season, huh? Uh, King turns and tries to bring his trident to bear as a couple of the sharks behind him uh, are swimming past, distracting him. And he sees too late as that shark comes in. And he kind of gets one thrust of his trident that goes way wide. And you see this happen, uh, Lalu. It bites straight into his throat and rips it, and you see his head kind of float back. His neck is exposed down to the bone, and it just gores him, and he goes limp and starts sinking down uh, into the ocean. What? Uh, uh, Yori, you're up. What? Yori's just <laughs> screaming what a bunch after what? No, like, she didn't see King get killed. Only nope. Lalu did. Okay, never mind. Uh, she, she doesn't have her weapons on her, right? 
Uh, nope, not unless she ha like wears them in her belt to go to bed. Yori probably actually has her short sword with her, but that's not going to do too. She's not going to carry her bow uh, with her. I would say you probably, knowing what was going on, would have grabbed a blade. Uh, yeah. You're probably one of the few people that took a weapon. I, but I don't think I would have grabbed my bow. I think I would have just grabbed you my You could blade. choose. Do you want a blade or do you want a bow? Oh, I want my bow then. That's okay. what like was tr my trusty bow throughout season one. Okay. Okay. Then I, do I see a fin up in the surface? Uh, are, are the sharks visible to me or the only visible? Yeah, I mean, you can see them floating around. You see their fins pop up once in a while, and then they go back underneath the water. There must be some kind of feeding frenzy going on. You're not sure on what, but... She's just going to start shooting frantically at, at any that she can see. <laughs> and I'm guessing the closest one is probably right here, if she can see uh, Yep, yeah, I'd say okay. so. Wiley, gonna... like, holds you up in the air like this, <laughs> like, hoping to help. <laughs> she's going to shoot okay. her short bow. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Make your attack roll. Ooh, I, I, do I have advantage with Wiley holding me up? <laughs> um, that's probably you can probably me. see. Really no, well. I think that'd be just much since the ship is actually air. like yeah. tilting and and. That's true. Um, you guys have. You, I'll just tell you, you have two rounds before these ships are underwater. Oh wow! Okay. You know that these things are sinking very quickly. Right. Uh, so, so you shoot and you miss. The arrow just kind of splashes into the water and then sinks slowly underneath. I'm going to use my um, uh, extra turn to uh, disengage. And am I aware that there is a rock relatively close? Like, my, I keep rolling low perception, so I don't know if my character is just, like, freaking out or if I'm allowed to be, like, observant and see that, like, I could potentially climb up that rock. Um... So you take a shot. I'll say you can spend your movement round to like get a good sense of lay of the land. So you can make okay. another perception roll. Yeah, I'll do that. It better than four. So you take a quick look around. Sure enough, you do see, uh, it looks like the ship might have hit this giant rock at least once. You can see wood splintered all around it and this giant um, uh, heavy kind of stone juts up out of the water it rises up about 15 feet. It's pretty sheer, but it does waves crash against it, spraying mist everywhere, but you could definitely stand on there. Okay. And then I'm guessing that's the end of my turn. That is the end of your turn, yes. Uh, this shark, for some reason I can't get these guys to move now. Anyone have any idea why that would be? You yeah. might be on the wrong layer if you <sighs> mouse over... I'm not. I had this happen when I've been uh, experimenting with it. It just stops working. Hmm. Maybe if I just reload it. Let me just try. Sorry, guys. That's okay. We're learning together. Okay, and then let's see if that works. I love this storm sounds, by the way. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah. I feel really in danger. It's okay, awesome. I can move him now. I can move him now. <laughs> All right. So, uh, yeah, he is going to uh, attack. I think it was this one. Oh, it's this one down here. Um just attacks that sailor that is trying to swim away from him right now. Oh my god. Uh, yeah, bites him and uh, bites off his left arm and you hear a horrific scream somewhere outside of the ship and uh, somebody help me! You hear a wave crash and the voice goes silent. Oh my god. Alright. Um, who's next? Lalu. Uh, yeah, I just need to get over to my group, uh, so I'm just going to start moving towards them. Uh, my speed swimming is 60 feet, so yeah, I can easily reach Langus, so I'm going to go just right over there and <laughs> swim up to the boat. Okay. <laughs> like, Wait. wave at him and try to, like, get him to understand, like hold my arms up to be like, get on, like, come on. Like, <laughs> it's okay. Like, I'm, I'm saving you. Like, I can't talk, but I'm, like, trying to, like, use my arms to, like, spell out, sure. like, like, la I, like, I spell my name with my arms. Like, la, <laughs> like, Lou. Uh, <laughs> Say it's me. Langus, you could make a intelligence saving throw with advantage. Okay. Let's have this go to, uh, wonderful. Hey, Yay. 16! Yay. All right. This is a friendly octopus. <laughs> Likely 
likely your friend. Maybe not, though. <laughs> but so he's friendly. There's this initial, like, oh my god, the octopus is... Oh, wait a minute. This octopus isn't being... Oh, Lalu can transform! <laughs> oh, right! <laughs> Magic exists, got it. Uh... I guess I'll just let myself be carried by the octopus? Yeah, uh, I just want to, like, scoop him up in one of my arms. I wonder if we have an octopus token. I don't think so. Oh. <laughs> uh, That's okay. And, and while we're doing that, I'm going to try and no, fashion my 50 feet of rope into, like, a, a lasso of some sort, or just, like, put a slip knot in it so I can, like, toss it out to other people and maybe, you know, okay. if I need to grab anyone and reel them in. All right, so while you're on the back of the octopus, I'm assuming you're swimming right near the surface. Is that what's going on? Yeah. So you, you pick him up. Um, you kind of have to end your turn early, but you pick yeah. him up. He jumps on your back. He kind of grabs onto your uh, octopusy, rubbery head. And uh, you are now swimming through the water. You are fashioning a rope to lasso people if you can. Uh, you see shark fins everywhere uh, now that you're out in the water, Langus. Wiley, it's up to, or not, no, you're not, there's a lot of sharks that are going to be going There's a now. lot of sharks that get to go first. <laughs> All right, so uh, because there's a lot of them, I'm just going to say that they ex expend their turns eating the uh, the sailors. So uh, these ones, yeah, all these people just, you hear the screams in the water uh, in the distance under the, the crashing waves and the thunder and the lightning. Uh, the sailors are getting furiously eaten by the sharks. Um, Wiley do, just got like, tears coming down her face and she's just scared and looking around and she's still got Yori. Okay. Uh, it so is your action. I, uh, how far is that rock from the edge of the boat where Yori and I are? Uh, you could, like, could I it's like jump? Ten, yeah, you could. You could definitely make an athletics check to jump down there. Okay, I'm gonna hold on to Yori. <laughs> Okay. And jump. Uh, so athletics. This is an athletics check. Yeah. All right. Seventeen. No nice. problem. You just grab the grab her in your arm, tuck her underneath, and grab the railing and launch yourself over and land with a kind of a thud just at the edge of the water. And yes. now that you're this close, you can see those other sharks that are swimming around. Uh, you don't know what they're feeding on, but there's something in there. Uh, they come up to the surface every once in a while and go back underneath. So you guys, you can move both of your icons um, onto the rocks there. Nice. Yeah. Do the sharks look like they're like waiting around for us? Or are uh, they like no. full now? Like they just don't want anymore? <laughs> uh, I mean, it looks like they're, some of them are preoccupied, definitely. Okay. Um, um, and was that my whole action? Nope, that's just your move okay. action. What do you want to do with your action? Uh, so, uh, Lalu and Langus are out in the water now where the sharks are, correct? Uh, what's um, that? Lalu and Langus are out in the water, uh, right? Yeah, I, yeah, you, I would say you see that happen. It's super strange. You see him jump onto an octopus. You have no idea why he would do that. I, I, okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I see Langus, um, and this weird octopus thing. And I'm like, well, must have been a friend of his. I don't know. So uh, <laughs> I I think I'm going to use um, uh, my crown of disgust um, wall of repulsion, uh, which I'll read it to you. Sure. As an action, you create an invisible, insub insubstantial wall of energy within 60 feet of you that is up to 30 feet long, 10 feet high, and one foot thick. The wall lasts until your concentration ends. Any creature attempting to move through it must make a wisdom saving throw. On a failed save, the creature can't move through the wall until the start of its next turn. Okay. Uh, on a successful save, it moves through the wall. Okay, so it's how wide is it again? Sorry. Uh, 30 feet long, one f or 10 feet high, one foot thick. Okay. All right, so let's just draw a shape here. Where, and I wanna... where do you want to do it? I want to like put that. Um, I, I I'd like to like plug up the the area in between the boats. <laughs> like there's the kind of that little channel in between oh, yeah, yeah, the I see boat pieces. About. So I'm gonna like yell to them. I don't know if they'll be able to hear me, but I just want to be like, get on the other side of the ship, and then like plug up that wall. I mean, kind of like that. Can you see that? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Uh. 
so yeah, um, I guess I can't wait until they've moved to uh, put on my wall, huh? No, you can't, but you actually, uh, Lalu, you all of a sudden see underneath the water, because you, your kind of eyes are down there, uh, you see this in like this really uh, this shocking energy that disperses the water almost, and it almost like it comes back up against it. Like there's something, a physical barrier there. You can actually see that happen. Um, and it seems like the water repels against it uh, from underneath the waves. It looks about, yeah, it looks pretty deep. It's it's about how five feet down, um, but it's a barrier that is just below the surface of the water. Um, so yeah, that's your action. Um, top of the order, uh, Mr. Reef Shark, who was killing King, sees an octopus carrying a man and is going to do something about that. Swims over, 5, 10, 15, 20, and takes a bite attack. No! Oh, no. And you just, you just kind of push all your tentacles uh, as you <laughs> as hard as you can with a, a gush of water and get right out uh, away from it, and it completely misses. Yori, your turn. I'm going to shoot that shark that just attacked my friends with my trusty bow, and hopefully I will not miss this time. Which one are you attacking? Oh, uh, the one that just attacked. Okay, cool. And with a 17. All right, yeah, uh, that is a hit, and I'll get—I will give you sneak attack. It is distracted. It's, it's definitely distracted. Um, you hit that thing, and as it just kind of like misses, it kind of comes out of the water for a second, like it was like charging at it, and you hit it right in the back of where the top of its head would be, and you just see it sink. It just goes underneath the water and disappears. Nice. So uh, we'll start um, with that one. I'm gonna. I, uh, I, I'm not gonna really do anything with my extra action. I really can't do anything with it. So I'm just gonna, unless I like, can get my bearings or anything. I'm just gonna end my turn there. Okay. Yeah. I mean, uh, you're you can swim between those, but your your swim speed is half of your regular speed. Yeah, I'd like to stay on the the rock with the nice orc lady who who okay. saved me. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, next is this reef shark and. Um, all he does is swims at full speed uh, right here because he sees people there. And he's swimming around the edge of that rock where the both of you are standing um, just back and forth. All right. Uh, yeah, I'm going to drop off Langus as quickly as possible. So I just swim. I guess what I'll do is like kind of try and swim like this way okay to try and avoid the shark a little bit and then come okay. up to like here yeah and drop langus off on the rock Yay! <laughs> <laughs> and then like i wave at everyone else on the rock <laughs> and like spell out my name again and then i try i try as best i can as an octopus to be like over there there is a ship i'm gonna go get it all right you're right like wait for me <laughs> All right, so... Wiley is so confused. <laughs> uh, Lalo, you still have movement. Is there anything else you want to do? Uh, I mean, I don't want to... How much, Let's see. How far did I go? Let's see. I went... Uh, you moved about, like, 50. Almost yeah. my entire... Yeah, I guess I'll just take another 10 just to try and get there as fast as possible. Okay. Um, but, yeah, I'm basically just, like, gunning for that boat to get it over to All them. right. Because I do not want them swimming in the water. <laughs> All right. Uh, I, what do the rest of you do? Do you want to? It seems like she's got a plan. Do you want to wait it out as you hear? Actually, the, the ocean goes silent other than the crashing of the waves. You do not hear any more horrific screams coming from the water. Um, do you just want to wait till she comes back? Uh, is that shark actively attacking Yori? No, it's just swimming right by her feet. Okay. Then I will wait. Uh, and keep an eye out for any... Can I look for survivors that are within 50 feet? Uh, yeah, you can make a perception check. I would like to try and find a survivor. 11? It's just too dark, and the, the storm is deafening. It's it's just picture like it's almost like pitch black, except for the streaks of lightning that hit every right. once in a while. And the water's crashing hard against the rock behind you. Uh, has, you has anyone seen King? Do I hear this or not? I'm just uh, as you're swimming away. away. Swimming you, away. You probably hear it as you swim away. 
And when he says that, I like pop up and like wave at him, and then I go like this. <laughs> <laughs> Wiley oh, says God. that octopus seems to know. <laughs> Just like <laughs> I make big my arms up to like make a crown. Like King is dead over there, <laughs> and then I'm like, okay, bye. And I like, keep swimming. All right, oh. so. <laughs> You swim uh, straight towards, we'll just get, if everyone else is waiting, you swim straight towards that boat. Um, you wrap it up in some of your, your tentacle arms and the sharks do pursue you, but you're actually faster than them. If you have a swim speed of 50. Uh, 60. 60, yeah, they can't catch you no matter how, how hard they try. They try to like swarm you, they try to cut you off. They can't catch you. You swim that boat all the way back to, oh, uh, nice. back towards them and bring it up against the side of the rock where they can easily hop in away from the jaws of the sharks. And uh, what do you do, Lalu, as uh, as you bring the boat up? Are you guys all hopping in, by the way? It will oh, fit. Yeah. But it we will, all fit. It'll barely fit four people. I... Is there somebody in the boat, or is the boat just adrift on the side? It just was adrift after, when the boat crashed. Cool. Awesome. Convenient. Yeah. Uh, before I change back into myself, is there, like, I want to just make sure that there's no need for me to remain an octopus, so I don't, like, change right away. I get everyone in the boat and then, like, kind of look around and do, like, this, and, like, should I get in? Wiley, like, just reaches in and picks you up, like, <laughs> just a big mess of octopus. Giant and octopus and drops puts you Puts you in. Because, like, like you, you seem smart, so I'm like, yeah. I, don't, I don't know what's going on here, but I don't want you to get eaten, so... And I just, like, uh, clap you in the... <laughs> yeah, I try not to, like, spread out as much as possible, but I'm, like, kind of just, like... <laughs> and I, I can be out of the water for an hour, so I'm just gonna stay an octopus for a while in case I need to jump back in and like do anything in the next hour. Because I have, okay. we're level four, so I believe, if I'm correct, I have two hours to be an octopus. All right. Um, so I'm just gonna stay an octopus for a little while, just in case. Okay. Um, unless anything necessary happens. So <laughs> in octopus form, uh, you guys, there's an octopus and the rest of you piling into the boat, and you start to row you're following the way that the waves are crashing uh getting a sense that there's probably a shoreline somewhere nearby and as you clear this reef you see something in the distance jutting up out of the water and we are going to take a quick break and we will come back and see what exactly it is they see Ooh.
Welcome back, everyone, to the second part of our first episode, where our characters have escaped a shipwreck and are now on a rowboat in the dark in the middle of a storm. As they row out, um, the waves are pretty, pretty deadly. The rowboat tilts and sways. You seem like you are getting closer to a shoreline. You think you see a, a dark horizon somewhere. As lightning strikes against the water, you can see, and sure enough, there are trees, you think, and a shoreline just maybe a mile or two out. But as you start to row, you see shadows kind of rising up out of the water. Uh, and this is what you see. As Curtis. You get closer. Oh, no. <laughs> King? Oh. King's a giant? What? <laughs> He's, he's become a giant undead monster. You left me here! No. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, you see you see this uh, these stone statues rising up out of the water, and you row quietly between them. And every time a lightning strikes, you can see that beneath the surface of the water is a sunken city. Oh. It's quiet and and uh, it feels like you're rowing through a tomb. Uh, Lalu is still an octopus, right? Yep. I, I grab Lalu and I go, "How would it be ridiculous to see if there's any treasure down there right now?" <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> right now, don't, don't listen to her, Lalu. She's insane. She's just mad because she lost all of her. We lost lives. everything. Our lives are more important than gold. We can always get more. Yeah, I just use one octopus tentacle to like shush. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's like, no. But, I'm not going down to look for treasure. <laughs> but maybe there's somewhere below the waves a, a, a building with air trapped in it still that we can wait out this storm so we don't get smashed against these rocks. And I use another tentacle to point to Langus and like say yes. And then I just. Slide in the <laughs> <laughs> <That was> <laughs> <awesome>. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you down. drop underneath the surface of the water and you see it kind of disappearing every once in a while off this flash of brilliant light that lights the sky and the water as you slowly descend down um, to these ruins that look almost kind of like um, uh, there's like lots of pillars. It has almost like a Greek architecture style feel to it. And there's about seven or eight buildings that are partially still standing. Some of the stone roofs have been caved in. Um, some of the pillars have fallen over and are covered with, um, you know, all kinds of uh, flora and fauna from the ocean. It's just brilliant colors that you see every time a lightning strikes above you. It's almost like a coral reef that covers this underwater sunken city. Uh, you swim around, you see three buildings that you would think would still stand. They, they are pretty much still structurally uh, intact. Um, but you get the sense that there's there's a lot of other underwater creatures in this area. As you take a, a quick look around, there are lots of fish and other types of, yeah, large fish, small fish, uh, but they seem to be keeping their distance from you as you slowly descend towards the city. Okay. Um, not super interested in making friends, so I guess I'll just be fine. I'm fine with that, <laughs> that distance. Uh, and yeah, I guess I just want to, is there anything down there that I can see where like they can go to or anything that I guess I'm looking for any, either a place where the rest of the party can be safe or if there's anything around that looks like it would be useful to get us to somewhere safe. Uh, so you are now, you've gone down about 50 feet. You think those buildings are probably touched the bottom at about 70 feet down. It's a pretty far distance. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you can make, I'm going to make, say, a survival check, actually. Okay. Ha-ha! <laughs> All right. Uh... You think it might be dangerous to bring them down here. You're just taking a look. You don't know a lot about the ocean. You're a newcomer to the seas uh, as an octopus. and But you get a sense that trying to bring everybody down here would probably be more perilous than trying to just get to shore. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Uh, and then I guess uh, with that, is there is there any gold in sight? Uh, I mean, you have to get closer. You can't see from here. Uh, you might, you might, if you're not that you can see, but there might be some in the buildings. I'll go. I'll go see what's in the building. Uh, the right. closest mm. one to me. Just Meanwhile, look, as, in case as there she... is something besides gold in there that I can bring up for everybody. Meanwhile, she disappears uh, deeper into the into the water. You obviously haven't been able to see her for a time. What are the three of you doing? We can't see her if if I like she, look over the edge. No, she disappears at, like after about ten feet. Just the ocean goes dark. Gotcha. Right. I say I say. Uh, so that's Lalu, right? Guys. I think so. <laughs> I, I really, really hope so. Otherwise, we need to go back out there and swim around looking for her in shark infested waters. Would be pretty amazing if it was just a random octopus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Spelling out Lalu because Lalu is dead. <laughs> yeah, Wiley's like, okay, I just wanted to make sure. Uh, does she do that a lot? Uh, turn into an octopus? Yeah. Not no. really octopus, but random animals. She's got a yeah. few animals. One of those people. Yeah. Cool. Oh. <laughs> You're definitely uh, not getting any gold. <laughs> Yari is a bit uh, just discombobulated and distraught over a king. Just like there's a lot of death in her life recently, and she's not really being able to just grasp all of it. The fish was supposed to be some kind of symbolism for her of like being okay with everything, and she lost the tuna fillets. So what does it even matter, right? <laughs> oh, you lost a friend, and you lost your tuna. Yeah, Riley it's... sees that you're upset and just like pets your head. That does not help. <laughs> <laughs> so who is She's... who is uh, rowing this boat right now? Langus is rowing the boat. Okay. <laughs> All right. So you try to point your yourself in the direction of the the closest shore that you can see. Mm -hmm. uh, try to avoid the rocks as best you can. There are, you know, the occasional wave that pushes you pretty close to shattering on the rocks, but. Langus is strong, even though he's a little bit out of shape. Uh, he manages to avoid a lot of the uh, the worst hazards that present to you now with the rocks and these statues that jut up out of it. As you get kind of through this little um, the valley between this distant statue and the near one, you get the sense of how large they actually are. You could actually fit very easily between the nook of that close fist and the tri uh, the trident. The whole uh, ship with everyone on it will fit in there. The the boat, the little rowboat that. Oh you're dear on. God! Okay. Um, and you continue to go past it. Uh, there's still no sign of Lalu. Lalu, you go start swimming down, and there's one of those still standing structures is quite close. Um, you swim down another twenty feet, and you can see that the entrance, the doors are all covered in this. Um, like seaweed and they're fairly heavily overgrown um when there's a flash of lightning again that lights up almost down to where you are from overhead and you s are overcast by a very large shadow uh i guess i want to turn around and see what is making the shadow sure make a perception check i think maybe i don't want to know what is Bye. Uh. 14. As soon as that sh you feel that shadow above you, you suddenly have a very ominous feeling. As you look up above you, you see a giant great white shark swimming <laughs> above you. And it's starting to turn and come down towards you. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm just going to swim away really fast. Where do you swim? Uh, I swim... It's between you and the rowboat right now. Uh, yeah, I swim away from it. Uh, okay. <laughs> I swim towards, away and up towards the surface, because I know that if I can just get to, like, one of the jutting up rocks, I can climb it and mm. get away from the shark, hopefully. Until okay. I can... Why don't you make <laughs> two... Athletics checks. Oh you need to succeed God, on both of them. Really gonna fail. This is not good, guys. You'll do I'll, great. I'll give you advantage. Doesn't <laughs> oh. Yeah. Make, no. No. Make a second one. Oh. All right. 
You start swimming, you go around the outside of this building and you know that this thing is chasing you. Oh. It comes around the corner, you look behind you, you can see it's gaining very quickly and you go straight up as it's right behind you now and swim as fast as you can. You can see the surface, the streaks of lightning lighting up above you. You can see the shadow of the boat of your friends ahead of you and you look back, he's gonna get you before you get to the surface. Can I shoot my ink cloud? <laughs> Do you have that? I have an ink cloud. It's a 20 foot right. radius cloud of ink extends all around the octopus if it's underwater. The area is heavily <laughs> obscured for one minute, although a significant current can disperse the ink. After releasing the ink, the octopus can use the dash action as a bonus action to finish getting to the top. <laughs> yes, you can do that. You don't yes. need to roll for it. You just, all of a sudden, you just have this very <laughs> weird feeling inside your body. <laughs> and this, this tremendous force of <laughs> everything around you goes black and you shoot straight up. All your tentacles come together in this giant, strong push. And you you, are, you push so hard because you need to get out of here that seconds later, all three of you turn and see her shoot out like a fleshy dart <laughs> up into the air. She goes up about five feet into the, into the air and splashes in the water. You're about 10 feet away from the uh, boat. What do you want to do? Uh... Oh, let's see. Ten feet from the boat. I can't get back in the water. <laughs> I just, I wave at the boat. Uh, Molo, this is no time to be playing around. Get back in the boat. I point, I point uh, with my tentacles. I point to the water. There's and air. Make, let's go, guys. I <laughs> make a fin. Wait, maybe <laughs> not. Maybe not. <laughs> I'm do this. All right. All and of a sudden. I do this with like all my arms. As you look below you, the 20 feet, you see uh, that giant shark has burst through the ink and is coming straight at you. What do you want to do? Uh, I, I, uh, oh my God. Uh, and so I'm not high enough up to get away from uh, it. You're, you're right at the surface of the water. So you do, it's 10 feet like uh, just away from you. You just got to go across the surface towards the boat. Okay, yeah, I'm just going to go, I'm just going to like go towards the boat. All right, so she starts swimming the towards the, to the rowboat. And as she starts coming towards you, you all of a sudden see this giant fin pop up out of the water and start to accelerate straight towards her, gaining on her very quickly. Um, I take that lasso that I've made, and I don't know how you lasso a shark. Well, you can try. try. I also want to shoot an arrow at it once he's done lassoing the fin. I don't know. Can I, can I like lower the lasso in the water so the shark goes like through it and then pull it tight? Or do I have to lasso the fin or? How do I? How can I? Can you'd I have to. You'd have to do the and snare it as it goes by. Okay, so I'm gonna like, I'll hand one side of the rope to. I'll make the lasso real big. Hand one side to. No, Yori's got a bow. I'll hand one side to Wiley. And be like, lower it in the water, like this, across the way with the shark. I'm just kind of like. I'm just doing what he says. Like, <laughs> huh? L low, lower, not that low. Higher, lower, look good. Good. <laughs> All right. So am I it, doing it right? It it. Uh, Lalo, you managed to pull yourself up seconds before you feel the rush of water underneath you. Okay. Uh, Neil, there is only a one in 20 chance that he's gonna go exactly through that. But you know what? <laughs> Roll it. If you get a natural 20, you can have it. Ooh. Oh. oh. <laughs> okay. You just feel the boat shakes as this giant shark goes right underneath. You hear the, <sighs> the side of the fin actually knocks the boat, almost knocking you all into the water, but you managed to steady it and continue to row away from the sunken city. As you get closer to the shore, you can actually see that um, there are more elements of this, this city, almost like it just kind of sunk the deeper it went out. Um, but there are these pillars that rise up out of it, covered in barnacles and uh, even some uh, seaweed and, and stuff like that. And you slowly make your way towards this sandy shore as the storm slowly dies out behind you and you pull yourself and the boat up onto the beach. Whew. That was really stressful, you guys. What do you do? <laughs> uh, Yori's uh, just kind of clinging on to the boat in, in uh, frustration and, and just discontent, you know? Uh, the world around yeah. it. I, I, as a uh, very... <laughs> relieved octopus just like get out of the boat and drag myself onto the shore and just like melt into an octopus puddle for a minute and then turn back into myself just like laying there like 
oh, <laughs> like very relieved that I did not just get eaten by a giant shark. Huffing and puffing, Langus is going to pull the boat as high up onto the shore as he can. Uh, Riley helps. Then immediately set around looking for anything that remotely resembles a shield that he could use. Uh, you take a quick look around. Um, there is absolutely nothing on this beach. It's exactly as what you see in that picture. It's washed up with, you know, uh, debris from the ocean, but it's like bitter kind of uh, frail pieces of wood uh, that are mostly, it's mostly branches and nothing that you think would, would sustain a hit from a weapon. All right, um, so I'm gonna go over to Wiley while everyone's catching their breath and I'm huffing and puffing. I'm gonna ask Wiley to help me rip the seat out of this rowboat, um, and then I'm gonna lash my rope around it in a circle and like use that to strap to my arm to at least get some sort of defense because okay. I have no armor and no weapons and I just took the great shield uh, feet at level four <laughs> and I want a damn shield. Okay, sure. Yeah, you can you can fashion one. Um, let's just let's just make a roll. Uh, I guess there's probably like a weaponsmithing skill, but if you don't have it, let's just make an intelligence check. Sure. Yeah. Or if you have an appropriate skill that way you think that would apply to this. I have the carpenter. Oh. oh yeah, that's perfect. Yep. There you go. I get a seven on my shield making. <laughs> so you fashion this really, really janky. It rubs against your forearm like really oh. abrasively. Just uh, splinters. <laughs> you think you think this will probably sustain maybe two or three hits before it breaks, but it's two or three hits that you don't have right now. Yeah. yeah. Wiley says, Good job, buddy. <sighs> Did it. Yuri's scavenging <sighs> the coastline for anything of like objects, items, anything from the wreckage. Uh, yeah, nothing yet. It probably would wash up in a bit of time, um, but uh, it would be a little while before it comes in from where you were. You guys are about a mile into the ocean. What's um, um what's visibility on the island like? Can we see like far into it, or is it just the coastline? So this is what you guys can see. Now, this is where I said this game is going to get a little bit experimental. Um, this is, uh, you can see that much of your surroundings. And what we're going to do <laughs> is this is a bit of a survival game. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and I have I have Lalu's on there because she's the druid, but uh, so right now she's the one that can control. But if you ever want to have someone else leading the party, just let me know. Uh, you have an opportunity to place yourself in any one of those hexes on the beach that is touching the circle that Lalu image is in right now. Where do you want to row that boat to? As you can see, there's the, the ocean around you. There's um, a jungle, like very dense foliage jungle right up. It's very, it'd be beautiful if it wasn't in such a stark, dangerous storm. Uh, and in in the far distance, every once in a while when you see lightning strike, you're pretty sure that you see kind of mist covered mountains. Okay. Can we go for this one right here with the little island jutting out that has like less tree coverage? I was gonna go for the deeper tree coverage oh. since it's like a storm. And we kind of maybe want some shelter. Okay. okay. Yeah. If it's a if it's a team decision, I'm okay with that. Yeah, I, I'm I'm flexible, but here's that the three closest woods to that I see. So I, I head for there, unless you guys have. So this one. Yeah, sure. Any one of those. But okay. does anyone else have an idea? Uh, I'm okay Wiley, with that. Wiley points to the big mountain that's like to the left over here. I don't know mm -hmm. if I can. How do I click, click, and, click hold. and hold? Oh, okay. That one. Yeah. Uh, she points over there and goes, I think we'd probably be safest where we can see everything. And that's really high, it seems. There might be caves in the mountain, too. That's a good idea. I that changed the direction idea. of the boat and head that direction. <laughs> okay. It's, it is pretty far in the distance, you, you would guess. Oh, it's... It's, it's probably... But so Five each of these... Each of these hexes, yeah, it's five feet. Uh, <laughs> and you're there. And we're there. <laughs> um, each of those hexes is 10 miles. Oh. oh. Never Dang. mind. Well, you know, we that's probably a good spot to get to eventually, right? Like, mm -hmm. we're going to want to get up there to see our surroundings at some point, maybe find civilization. So it's going to take us a while to get there, but 
So maybe we should make camp like closest to that big mountain, but in yeah. the forest a little bit. Yeah, let's grab like this section of woods, if that cool. can be seen. So, so you landed yeah. on this side then? Yeah. Okay. So we'll say that you landed on this one right here then. Perfect. Okay. All right. Uh, so that's where you guys have, you kind of tuck yourself into the trees a little bit just because the wind is very strong. It's cold. Um, Actually, no, it's not. It's not cold. It's uh, very humid, actually. Uh, um, muggy. It's muggy. Oh, I left my fan on the boat. And we're uh, right. uh, oh, not your fan, Langus. <laughs> Why don't you just double that bad shield as a fan? Oh, I whoa. like you better as well. <laughs> uh, what do you guys do? You guys are currently um, just inside this the, the line of jungle, and there's the, uh, this long, sandy beach that leads up uh, your boat is still, you know, beached there, uh, but you don't, like I said, you don't see anything that'll be of use uh, coming in from the waves uh, from the wreckage. And it's raining on the island as well. Yeah, there's. It's kind of right now. It's it's still like a torrential rain. It'll it'll hit really hard and then lighten up for maybe a few minutes and then then downpour again. The waves have lightened up because you're in a, a nice uh, alcove here, a nice bay, so it softens it a bit, but. Uh, you're 99% sure that trying to take that rowboat out again would probably get you smashed against some rocks. Uh, Yori wants to search for just like natural coverage if there's like a thicket of woods that seems like less terrible than the rest. Sure. Why don't you make a um, survival check? Okay. Well, she what? does that. Uh, Wiley like keeps pulling the boat with them. And then while they're all talking and stuff, she just like kind of sits in it. Like, just making sure nothing happens to it. Okay. <laughs> She's really attached to this boat. <laughs> All right, so uh, why don't you make a constitution saving throw? I just want to see if that tires you out. No, oh, darn it. <laughs> you're, oh, you're saving against... throw? Yeah, that's right. You rolled the right one. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, once you, you drag it up the beach for like a half a mile, and then that's kind of where the tree line ends, is, you know, 200 feet to the tree line, and you just stop, and you sit in it, and you are absolutely exhausted. Um in fact, you guys are all feeling a bit hungry, a bit thirsty, and uh, yeah, it's it, you don't have any shelter. Yori goes into the a little ways into the, the jungle to see if she can find some natural lean-tos or uh, places away from the elements, but that rain just comes straight through that canopy of the jungle and just absolutely soaking you. You guys are all obviously still wet from being in the water, but um, it's, it's endless. Yori finds a really big leaf on her adventure she comes out with it almost as an umbrella or like a tarp okay. around her i so. i see the leaf that she got and i have been i don't care about the ranks i like lived in the jungle for a while with zisa but uh i have been looking for leaves to perform the traditional druidic funeral ritual <laughs> for king so when I see that Yori has decided to help, I that warms my heart. And I <laughs> say thank you, and I take the leaf from her uh, and put it into the leaf pile that I have been putting together uh, in order to perform the, the funeral rites for King. All right. <laughs> OK. Uh, so so that's what you spend your time doing. Um, you're creating, you're gathering leaves and creating um, this, this pyre or this uh, uh, homage to your friend King. What does it exactly entail once you've built it? Mm. Once it's built, I gather everyone around who's willing to, and we do the traditional funeral <laughs> ritual of bringing our arms up and then we pull them down as the tears that flow from our face <laughs> fall in memory of our great hero. Um, <laughs> this is not necessarily a uh, an actual druidic ritual. This is what she learned from Zisa, who sort of made it up at one point. Um, so the idea is that if there is anyone who can play a musical instrument, we have that. But if not, we just do this okay. in a circle for a little bit. Yori plucks her bowstring as well. <laughs> yes. I'm like tapping on the, the side of the boat, like drums, like just giving them a beat. Yeah, and I'm just like, King was a good. <laughs> Was a good king. King King's face is now in the ocean <laughs> with the sharks. Praise King. We'll miss Praise king. king. We'll miss you, King. Miss you, King. Miss you. I don't. I don't so, know you are so, King. But... I so badly want him to wash up on the shore right now. I'm not gonna, <laughs> I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> uh, yeah. Usually, what would happen is we would use dry leaves and then light it on fire. 
Um, but since we can't do that uh, after after we do this, I just uh, kick all the leaves in different directions to signify that we've completed the ritual. All right. Sounds good. <laughs> uh, you kick them and the wind kind of picks them up and yeah, carries them, them off away. deeper into the oh. jungle. Yuri reaches um, for her big leaf, but it's gone. Yeah. <laughs> Wiley loves this. She's like, yeah, what? What are we doing? This is great. Uh, Langus, what are you doing? Uh, once the, the ritual is over with, Langus quickly goes to find a, a tree branch that he can break or something lying on the ground. He wants to make a club. He needs some sure. sort of rudimentary weapon. All right, so I'll, you can make another carpenter roll and find a really good sturdy piece and then, uh, you know, break off the weak parts and make it a really uh, heavy weapon that you can do some bludgeoning. Hey, oh, yeah. there we go. All right, so you have, you do, you have a club. Uh, it's, a, it's a D6 club weapon and you're pretty sure this will take a long time. It will, probably won't break for a while. Did you say a D6 club weapon? It's oh, a great. D6 damage, yes. Wonderful. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, so he finds a, a fashionable club, um, and you're you're pretty sure it's it's probably coming to the morning. The storm slowly does start to die down, but the elements are starting to wear on you. The constant rain is starting to, even though it's it's very humid, you're starting to feel chilled. And uh, there's no windbreak. I just right in the right in the front line of the jungle. It's it's howling against you guys. Uh, what do you want to do? Yuri. Why... Oh, I'm sorry. Go for it. Uh, Wiley, like, tips the boat over as hard as she can, like, flipping it over so it's upside down, and okay. just, like, lifts it up a little bit and says, come on, family, come stay warm. <laughs> and, like, I, I just, like, beckon everybody into the upside down boat for shelter. Yori has her fanny pack with her from her previous adventures and is collecting clean rainwater in it. I, okay. uh, hopefully, can it contain it as a fanny pack? Uh, well fashioned, <laughs> oiled leather Is there fanny any pack. You can collect water <laughs> with. We could turn the boat right side up. <laughs> <laughs> that would be one way to do it. Um, I don't know if she wants to do that. Right now, you actually don't have anything to collect water with. Okay. Yikes. Would you guys rather be? wet and cold or thirsty I, it's a jungle i guess i guess it's a choice it, it, it's a jungle it's very humid and and wet everywhere i'm, I'm sure we'll find a creek or a river eventually okay. and if we don't you know i mean one one night's worth of water isn't going to make that much of a difference if we can't find sustainable water supplies all right so let's get a little warm let's oh get... brit okay. silenced Oh, I was saying, can't we just open our mouths? <laughs> I was going to say, isn't it raining? We can just like... It is, yeah. It's more for the future when we start to travel and might not have access to water. Yeah. Uh, I'll uh, gather whatever brush I can and bring it under the the boat. Maybe like build a little sand wall so the boat's got an angle to it yeah. and desperately try to get a fire going. I have a, a tinder box with me that I managed to salvage off the ship. Sure. All right. So yeah, you can just make a survival check to see if you can get that fire going. You get a nice little lean-to going it on. Going. Get it. It's all, it's too wet. <laughs> yeah. It's just, it's difficult. You, you can't get this thing lit with the wind and the rain. It's, uh, it's going to take some time before you can uh, get this going. Wait, and when can I use out. thaumaturgy to set light the fire? Uh, yes, I think so. Oh. Oh. Well, I don't think I don't think you wrote it. You just, I think you just oh, use it. I think you just, I just use clicked it. it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I just use thaumaturgy. Uh, you make you make twelve points of fire. <laughs> Sorry, I, I like clicking things when I'm doing them. Um, yeah, yeah. I use my thaumaturgy to to light the fire for us. So. All, right. All right. So you guys have a nice little lean-to that uh, Wiley created, and you guys get a fire going. Uh, you have a little bit of space so that the smoke can kind of go out, and you manage to keep yourselves warm. Um, and you're all pretty exhausted. It's been a desperate, uh, fight to get to this, to the shore. Uh, you guys are all actually fatigued and will probably need to take a rest as the fire slowly kind of warms you up. You can hear outside that the storm starts to abate and the rain slowly lets up just as the sun starts to rise up over the horizon. And, um, 
yeah, it's the storm dies down and it all of a sudden starts to get very hot. And you feel like it's probably around nine in the morning as the heat starts to choke you. Oof. Mm. I like the heat. <laughs> I just enjoying it. <laughs> she like sunbathing on the beach. <laughs> mm-hmm. I just like roll out of the boat. And I'm just like, ah, this is, I love the heat. It's great. So should we take a short rest then? And I mean, like how much time is that going to take? Um, uh, a short rest is like an hour. Okay. So that would probably be enough to get your energy up again to keep going. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Wiley wants to do that. Yeah. Lingus probably is already asleep. Yeah. Same okay. thing with Yori. Nap time. So all of you go for, to rest for an hour? Yes. Mm-hmm. All right, so you lay your head down, cuddle up around the fire in this very contained upside down boat. And an hour later, you kind of slowly wake yourselves up and it's just quiet. You hear the gentle lapping of the, the water up against the beach and uh, a very gentle um, wind that's very warm. And you are still on the beach with no water and no food. You gotta go find some My ear feels gross now. She's a little sweaty. <laughs> yeah, like, you're salty. There's sand everywhere. Ugh. She rolls out from under the boat and like kind of like stretches out into the beach. Her, but I'm sure that was the one hour of sleep that she got while she was on the boat. So that was <laughs> well needed. Langus, you can find some leaves in the jungle and make yourself a goddamn fan, okay? <laughs> Yori yells. <laughs> Just because we're stuck on this stupid island again doesn't mean you need to take out your anger on me. We don't even know where we are, okay? I don't even it's know. It's hot. It's on. gotta be Cholt. You're right. Miserably hot. No. Wiley goes into the forest <laughs> just a little bit and wait, like, Wiley, where are you going? <laughs> checks around, like just the very edge of the forest, like just Can looking we... for stuff. Can we eat some of the fish that Yori, or did you lose it? What yeah, you- has anything washed up since we've been oh, napping? What about all that fish you caught? Uh, you do, actually. Uh, you guys can all make a perception check as you yeah. pull, get up out of the boat. You guys are pretty close to where you rowed in. Ooh. Ooh. I find every single one of my <laughs> ten beautiful eggs. Uh, Yori, I actually want you to make a luck roll. <gasps> Oh, how do I even do that? That's just a d20 roll. Just roll. Okay, cool. <laughs> no. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> uh, as you're combing, all of you get up out from under the boat and you start searching the beach for anything that might have washed up overnight. Uh, Yori, you find one thing and it's it probably burst out of the bag that held them all together, but you find one tuna filet still wrapped up, still preserved. That's all you managed to find that washed up on the on the boat. What about the rest of you guys all searching as well? What did we get I'm rolling yeah. a morality check. Yeah, I mean, I rolled really poorly. Uh, and it's morality. a low morality check, so I eat it immediately. <laughs> uh, Langus, you also you rolled a 14, so yes. you're searching up and down. You're maybe about four, 15 feet away from Yori as she like reaches down, looks like she's found something exciting. And you rolled a four for your luck. Was that you? I uh, didn't roll. Okay, oh, that was roll, me. Roll, Sorry. Roll, roll for your luck. Eight. All right. Uh, you managed to find one thing as well that has washed up. Um, it looks like uh, a, a remnant of your bag that, that must have caught on something. So a big piece of leather of your bag is caught and it's kind of buried underneath the sand. You see a bit of, um, it shines a little bit uh, and you brush the sand away and you see that your armor has oh, washed whoa. up on the shore. Nice. Somehow not... there was something wow. keeping it afloat, and it managed to manage to get there. But that's all you find. And the other two, Wiley and Lalo, you don't seem to be able to find anything. Uh, you search around. I for found a, a bunch while. of sand. You found some sand. <laughs> Me too. So you nice. do have you have one stake, and uh, I am going to say I'm also going to roll a uh, just a twenty here. This is from my end. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. what? I you hope actually. <laughs> Uh, what? one single barrel has landed, kind of like, it perched itself up against a rock. It is a little bit cracked, and, uh, it's actually Lalu that stum- stumbles across it. You see that it's leaking water. Nice. 
Uh, yeah, I run over to it. Uh, is it a big leak or like? Uh, it's just like it would probably fill a cup in a minute. Okay. So it's not I bad. just shout to everyone, say, "Look, look, look, look at this! Come over here. Um, just show them." We attend her water party. Yeah. How, yeah, how heavy then... is the boat? Uh, probably like a uh, like 150 pounds. Okay. It would be unreasonable for us to put the barrel in the boat and then try and carry the boat through the forest, correct? Uh, it wouldn't be unreasonable. It'd be pretty taxing, pretty tiring. Yeah, that would cut our travel time, I'm sure, by like a half, if not yeah. more. Yeah, yeah. Or double. It basically, it basically um, without a, a good survival check, you can move one hex a day. With a good one, you can do two. Um, but uh, that would slow you down in half. So it would take you two days to go through a uh, full hex. Oof. Yeah, we don't need to keep the boat if we're not going back on the water, right? Well, how do we carry the barrel without well, we spilling could, it if it's cracked? I, so I just would a say we like crack. Make, a, make bags for it or something, like for the water. You know, like instead of fix the barrel, just put it in something else. I did manage to salvage one water skin, so I'll fill that up right away. Okay. All right. So how about, how about you just like you stand there like for the whole time and just like let the leak fill up your water skin <laughs> when it's full, we drink it. <laughs> and we'll go do the rest of everything and you just stay here. <laughs> Great plan, right? Uh, that's how you're going to exist for the rest of your lives. That's yeah. a job for a peasant. Campaign not over. Noble. <laughs> you're Let's right. see. What can we do? I, I sigh frustratingly. And say, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go into the forest and try and find if there's any living creatures here that we could eat. Okay. I don't wanna, I don't wanna see another goddamn fish, forever. <laughs> I'm right. hungry. I wanna find something too. And then maybe we can use the animal skin that we get to turn it into water. Sure. Holders, containers. All right. So yeah, you uh, head into. So who's all going into the jungle right now? Everyone. I think yeah. Langus is standing nearby, mumbling something about this is peasant's work while he's <laughs> water skid next to the cracked barrel. I'll, I'll stay with Langus just to make sure nothing happens to him. Okay. Cool. All right. So the two of you head into the jungle to see what you can find. Um, this is all very foreign to you. You don't know where you are, uh, but you try to get a sense of yourself in, in the jungle. Luckily, there's a druid with you. Lalu is comfortable in the jungle. So why don't you both make survival checks and... Uh, yeah, go ahead. God. Oh this god. It's gonna be What not. are these? Kelly, goals? you've been rolling terrible. Awfully. <laughs> season one was the year of Yori, and now she's just done. Ooh. I got, right. all, I got all your good rolls. Thank you. So <laughs> so you you do after you go in probably uh you know a good three, four hundred feet, leaving the beach behind, you can kinda now hear the ambience of the jungle. It goes very quiet. In the far distance, you can hear the waves still kind of gently lapping up against the shore. And it slowly starts to raise up a little bit. And as you're walking deeper in, you see what looks like just a, a very sharp outcropping that actually has a large overhang and it's covered in trees and natural foliage. Uh, as you get closer to it, you realize that, that actually could be a pretty good shelter if you needed one. It would be away from the, from the elements outside. It's still hot, but uh, it would shelter you from any kind of rain or... And only like being like 500 feet away, we could probably carry the barrel. Yes, exactly. It's it's pretty close. Uh, but you continue on and f just trying to find some kind of uh, track. And eventually you do. You find uh, hoofed tracks that mm -hmm. lead further into the jungle. There's only one set. Um, Lalu, what can you transform into? Uh, many, many things. What are you thinking? Something to hunt? I'm thinking that I try and shoot an arrow and, and like try and kill it in one shot. And if I can't, I have you as backup to chase it down once it runs away. Mm. Okay. Yes. Uh, just one moment. Let me, let me see what would be best for this. I'm not going to, I'm going to, I'm going to wait to transform until it runs away though. Cause I only have like two. I can only transform two times per, I think it's long rest. I have to check. Oh, okay, okay. okay. 
Uh, no. Oh, it's okay. Yeah, this ain't your fault. <laughs> God damn it. Yeah. yeah. The internet's fun. Oh, there we go. We're back. Are we? I see okay. it. Yay! I see it. Welcome. All right. Hello, everyone. We're just sitting here okay, talking. Okay, sorry, guys. Yeah. Okay, so both of you are making stealth checks. You haven't transformed yet. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so you guys yeah. kind of hunch down <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you notice after a few steps, uh, Yori, that she's like she's basically stepping on every branch, every leaf. Uh, she even trips wallow. on some vines. She farts. Just Stay everything. Damn it, <laughs> that smells so bad. I just sneeze. <laughs> right I here. sneeze, and when I sneeze, my head like hits a branch that then like breaks and falls onto the ground. A thousand birds leave the tree. <laughs> I'm going to go forward. You stay right here. If it starts to run away, you chase. And I say that as quiet. <laughs> okay, so you continue. She's, you tell Lalu to stay back. And you cr quietly, very quietly creep forward. And you're going up a little bit of a slope following these tracks. And they're pretty, they look really, really fresh. And as you come up over clearing, you see a large um, jungle tree. And the back end of this hoofed creature, but you can only see the back end. It looks like the rest of it is behind the tree and you can see a furry rear end uh, leading down to hooves. Okay, yeah, I shoot it. It, I hasn't, noticed, it hasn't noticed you yet. Then I'm gonna, I'm gonna take my shot there. I don't think I'm gonna get a better shot. All right, go ahead, take your shot. I'll give, I'll give you advantage. Oh, come right. on. Trusty short bow. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm keeping track of my arrows, by the okay, way. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll have to for this this survival game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you take a shot, and it soars straight through and hits it right in the rear, uh, kind of the uh, its flank, right on the left Hunch. side. And it's butt. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's it's butt ass. And Technical you do terms. <laughs> you do 15 damage uh, to the creature with your sneak attack, and you hear a ow. Oh. And God. All of a sudden, the torso stands up, and you see what looks like a satyr. A uh, satyr is grabbing his his ass, and he looks <laughs> over at you. What the fuck? <laughs> and that's where that's where we're gonna end this week's session because we have about five minutes. <laughs> five minutes to go. Oh my god. Um. So yeah, thanks for everyone coming out. Uh, I believe we're doing this every Wednesday. Correct? Is mm -hmm. that is that a real thing? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Um, so I guess we'll just do the the outros. Um, I guess I just slide it over to Britt. Yeah. Hey, it's me, Britt. Thank you guys so much for watching. This was so much fun today. What a great way to start season two. Can't wait for more. Um, I sometimes stream on my personal channel on Twitch. Uh, it's slash Cheerhex. I'll probably be streaming some Dark Souls this Sunday. Um, and uh, yeah, catch us next uh, Wednesday. I'm looking forward to it. I'll be streaming from Korea, so that'll be a new oh, experience. Wow. Yay! <laughs> uh, yeah, that's me. Over to you, Danny. Uh, yeah, I'm Danny Hartel on all the things. I'm a costume designer, so if you're into that sort of thing, I do a lot of D and D costumes for a bunch of people, including D and D. But currently, C Team uh, from Penny Arcade. Uh, so if you're into that sort of stuff, follow me. Um, yeah, uh, this was super fun, and I'm super excited to keep going. I can't wait to see how this all turns out. Uh, Neil, what do you have to say for yourself? I am Neil, also known as Koibu. I just do a bunch of D&D stuff on my channel all the time. I've got a game this Friday at 3, and then Saturday at 6 a.m., and Saturday at noon, and Saturday at 6 p.m., and then Sunday again at noon. Um, it's a lot of D&D stuff over my way. And uh, Kelly. Thank you, Neil. Uh, I'm Kelly Link on the internet. I am Hello Kelly Link on Twitter. Uh, and on Twitch. I host and do interviews for video game events and I have a few coming up that I can't say right now, but if you do want to watch me on these upcoming events, follow me on Twitter where I'll post about them. I am super excited to be joined by Danny in this campaign and to have this rambunctious 12-year-old uh, half-orc. <laughs> I'm a little sad that King is dead. That, uh, you know, to just be eaten by a shark and then to just be gone. That's it. That's your, like, funeral rites. <laughs> but uh, I'm really excited for season two. It's going to be great. Curtis, I hope you're excited as well. Uh, yeah, I am. I was a bit nervous about tonight because it's been a while since I've, I used to run a show called uh, the D20 Babe Show, which if you want to see kind of my GM style, you can go check it out on YouTube. It's uh, youtube.com slash D20 Babe. 
it's like 30 episodes. It's like 90 hours of content. It's way too much, nice. but you can kind of get a taste <laughs> of, of what I, what I'm about. Um, but I'm really, really happy with how tonight went. I didn't know what exactly was going to happen. So, uh, King, I hardly knew you. Uh, we'll be back. <laughs> we'll be back uh, next Wednesday at the same time, 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And until then, uh, keep betting and have fun. <laughs>